survey-based reports, uh, which allows me to get a pretty good insight into the service desk industry about different topics. And these topics range from quite current, potentially basic topics, to more advanced and potentially futuristic topics. And despite the topic, I always like to inject a bit of realism into my work. And I'd like to think that this presentation is a good example of this. And hopefully by the end, you'll agree. Um, so just a quick rundown of uh, some of the main points from this session. We'll see a lot of SDI Insight data from various reports, and all of our Insight reports are freely available on the SDI website. So the first thing we'll look at is areas of IT uh, that IT service professionals are looking to develop in the next year. Um, and then we'll take a look at what tools service desks use to support the business, um, as well as what we could expect to see happen in the industry over the next 12 months and beyond. I'll then talk about some technologies of varying complexities, which can be combined to provide a zero touch approach to service and can improve the customer experience. And these include things like process automation, sophisticated chatbots and omni-channel service. And what I think this could mean for the future of the service desk. But of course, as fantastic as all this technology is, we need to be realistic and acknowledge that not every organization will be able to implement every technology. So I'm going to give you some tips around what you can do now to set yourself up for the future. But before that, I want to talk about the pillars of excellent service. Everything I say today can be related back to one of these pillars. And what I mean by that is that the most, most things that you do around your service should be to benefit your customers, whether it's directly or indirectly. Firstly, accessibility of service. Can customers reach the support team easily in a way that suits them at any time that suits them? So that includes support and communication channels, everything from telephony to live chat to self-service to chatbots and so on. And do they need to leave their preferred platform to contact the service desk? So the main points to think about here are integration of tools and processes, 24 seven support, those sorts of things. Next, there's accuracy. So this is where a strong knowledge base and knowledge sharing culture comes into it. Not only is this accuracy of articles for self-help, but it's also knowledge among support staff and accuracy of ticket resolution. Speed is obviously a big factor and can play an important role in shaping the customer experience. And while you shouldn't sacrifice quality for speed, in some cases there can be significant cost to the business in terms of revenue and or efficiency if issues go unresolved for a significant period of time. So the speed of service is an important aspect to consider as well. Finally, usability. Quite simply, how easy is your service to use? How easy are your alternative communication channels? Not only can this have an impact on the customer experience, but it can also have a negative effect on adoption rates, leading to poor return on investment. By understanding the pillars of exceptional service, your support service can begin to work towards becoming more customer centric and developing your service. And there are many different things which will be a priority uh, for different service desks, which we'll look at in the next slide. But improving your quality of service to your customers should be at the forefront of your development. When asked what areas of service management they were looking to develop, the vast majority of service desk professionals specified that their attention is focused on automation. And this is understandable, as we've seen across several SDI reports, improving the efficiency and quality of IT services using automation has fast become a significant focus for organizations. I'll be talking about process automation uh, in a bit more detail later. Interestingly, the next main focus for respondents revolves around service desk staff's motivation and development. Investing time in staff is integral to ensure effective IT support and a team which can evolve alongside technology. Typically, SDI Insight data shows that the service desk uh, are likely to focus more on customer experience than employee experience. So it's surprising to see this trend turned on its head here and something which will be interesting to monitor. The next two factors are centered around customer experience, the more commonly chosen of the two um, being around monitoring CX by moving towards using XLAs or experience level agreements. And the second being employing a customer centric approach to service management. Now, it may seem disheartening to see that these factors relating to customer experience are only resonating with around 50% of respondents. 
But it's important to note that most, if not all, of the above factors relate to improving the customer experience in some way. As I mentioned, ultimately, any focus the service desk may have should consider the impact on the customer as well as IT services. And it's important to involve key business stakeholders when looking to develop a strategy or project, including key customers, to understand how IT can support the business and continually improve the customer experience. Something which a lot of organizations are having to contend with now is supporting a remote workforce. In fact, 66% of service desks are now supporting more customers remotely than they were pre-COVID. The technologies a service desk has access to uh, can affect how effectively they're able to support a remote workforce. And according to this data, the most common tool service desks have is email, fo uh, followed closely by remote support. Telephony, which 88% of respondents have, and email are consistently among the most commonly used communication channels across SEI Insights. And telephony in particular has been a uh, service desk staple for over 30 years. So it's interesting to see remote support surpass telephony and uptake, though it is understandable given the challenges organizations have faced this year. In the previous slide, we saw that the majority of service desks were looking to focus on process automation. And here we can see that 43% of respondents are currently utilizing this asset. And we can also see that 14% are utilizing channel integrations. And again, I'll be speaking about this a bit later, but further analysis of the data shows that the majority of respondents who have channel integrations also have automated processes, which suggests that these respondents are able to derive more value from channel integrations. The most common thing that respondents expect to see over the next 12 months is greater use of live chat or chatbots as support channels. As we saw earlier, 37% and 14% of service desks offer live chat and chatbots as a support channel respectively. Now, both of these channels can be beneficial for the service desk, though their functions do differ. And I will note that we often ask what tool service desks use, and chatbots has increased significantly since this time last year. And perhaps this is due to the current climate of needing to access support remotely, or perhaps this was a natural progression. The proportion of respondents who expect a greater use of self-service or self-help has also fallen significantly since 2017. However, there are several considerations when analysing this statistic, like the increase in the number of options in uh, this version of the report. Furthermore, it's interesting to note that self-service and self-help have been major topics in the industry for several years, and industry reports like this are showing that this is still the case. And while many service desks are still struggling with self-service for one reason or another, the perseverance of the industry in trying to improve their portal and sharing what they've learned from their self-service journey signifies that service desks recognise the impact that self-service is having and will continue to have on the industry. And it will be interesting to see if topics like AI, advanced automation and ESM will be met with similar enthusiasm and persistence in the coming years. Other significant changes since 2017 include the fact that the proportion of respondents who expect to see more ITSM tools and processes being used in non-IT business functions has more than doubled. This category is considered to be an aspect of shared services or enterprise service management. Um, which shows that service desk professionals expect more organisations to adopt a shared services way of working. Another SDI research shows that we're already seeing increasing proportions of uptake in ESM within the industry. This signifies that many support professionals are aware of what's going on outside their own service desk, and that's an incredibly positive observation to point out. The final significant change uh, since 2017 can be seen in the proportion of respondents who expect to see a greater use of AI and machine learning technologies, which has more than doubled in two years. Other SDI data has shown that there is a trend showing that more and more organisations are adopting AI and machine learning. However, it's a slow and steady transition, and it'll be interesting to see if this is a gradual change or whether it speeds up over time. I want to dig a bit deeper into that self-service statistic. So let's take a look to the future. We asked service desk professionals how far they agreed that we'd use more self-help or self-service facilities in the future. 
and the results showed that while the vast majority agreed with this statement, for the second year in a row, or the second time in a row, there was a small increase in the proportion of those who disagreed. Now, perhaps this is due to the availability of other support channels like chatbots and virtual agents. In fact, we asked whether service desk professionals thought we would be using more of these technologies in the future, and 65% agreed with the statement. And as we saw, most of, uh, service desk professionals expect to see a rise in the use of live chat and chatbot technologies. And SDI research is showing signs that this is the case. However, there is a lot of work that needs to be done behind the scenes to ensure that your chatbot can work efficiently and be a great tool that customers want to use. For example, ensuring your processes are refined and ready for automation. ITSM best practices detail a number of ways in which IT support functions should perform. The most common and pertinent uh, to the service desk being instant management and problem management and request fulfillment. However, the issues arise when these processes are treated as separate entities, when actually to achieve their maximum efficiency and value, complementing processes should be integrated and entwined so that they become almost like one fluid process. Ensuring that your processes aren't wasteful and don't contain unnecessary steps can lead to significant improvements in the efficiency, productivity and consistency of IT support and the service it provides. Using some of the process refining techniques used in agile and lean methodologies, you may be able to identify aspects of a process that could be automated and therefore delivering the same value faster at a reduced cost. You may want to take this opportunity to review processes from multiple support teams, such as HR, finance, or facilities. And in doing so, you may be able to highlight similarities between the different support teams' processes. And this presents the opportunity to explore shared services or enterprise service management. ESM offers service desks the opportunity to extend their value across a business by attempting to uh, share best practices and tools from different support teams to boost performance, create service consistency and promote a common language. It also creates transparency across an organisation and it can raise the profile of the service desk while increasing the efficiency and communication of each support team. Refining processes and blending them to create a seamless exchange of inputs and outputs relevant to each process can greatly improve the efficiency and productivity of the support function. But it is possible to take this a step further. Many tools now have the capability to be integrated into the IT infrastructure to automate a number of processes and procedures, which can be routinely repeatable, time consuming and low value. There is more potential to be had from automating processes and streamlining the transition of inputs and outputs. There are also different complexity levels uh, of process automation. Each have different implications and applications for the support team. Each organization will have different capabilities, infrastructure and resources, which will dictate the level of automation they are able to implement. And while cognitive automation, for example, may allow for maximum efficiency of processes, it may not be the most cost effective option for some, particularly smaller support teams. And as such, it's necessary to fully understand how automation can benefit your organization and which complexity of autom automation best fits your requirements, resources and budget. As I mentioned, as well as processes, many tools and technologies now have the capability to be integrated. For example, when logging a ticket, a service desk solution integrated with the CMDB can leverage automation to autofill fields such as PC serial numbers. And similarly, an ITSM tool which is integrated with the known error database um, and automated can alert a service desk analyst to whether an incident is related to a known error and supply them with a workaround or prompt them to escalate it to inc uh, the incident problem management. Giving analysts the best chance to perform optimally can then reduce your average inc instant resolution time, uh, which should then have a knock-on effect to improvements in other metrics like call wait times, average cost per instant, uh, first time fix, and so on. Integrating AI tools such as natural language processing and machine learning with chatbot technology can help it to better understand what the customer wants and potentially carry out relevant tasks faster and more efficiently than other channels may be able to. Using these capabilities to enhance your chatbot can, be, uh, can also be implemented as a layered approach to what is essentially an excellent foundation for a virtual agent. 
And this is an example of iterative, gradual improvements to enhance and elevate the chatbot and its capabilities. Virtual assistants are essentially chatbots that can execute workflows. For example, where a chatbot might reach a point where they're no longer able to deal with a customer issue uh, and will perhaps escalate the conversation to live chat or another channel, a virtual agent would be able to carry out an action which could be anything from logging a ticket to ordering a new piece of hardware to creating a change request. Machine learning allows chatbots to iteratively learn from a data set to improve how it responds. Essentially, the system makes a guess, receives feedback and guesses again until it gives the best answer. And this can be beneficial for the customer experience as it may lead to faster resolutions of customer issues, while also being an overall more user-friendly support channel, which resembles human contact. The main purpose of natural language processing is to allow your chatbot to understand conversation in a better way. It's said that building a great chatbot is similar to teaching someone a foreign language as it needs to learn vocabulary, understand syntax and semantics and be able to construct answers. NLP can be beneficial because it makes interactions with the chatbot feel more like a conversation with another human. And that can be great if some customers find it less frustrating to communicate via this channel, if it feels less robotic and more personal or chatty. Sentiment analysis allows a chatbot um, to analyze how the customer is feeling based on how they're writing. For example, are they using short sentences? Are they using negative words or exclamation marks or similar indicators of extreme emotion? And this can be useful for the chatbot as it's able to understand how to proceed with the chat. For example, a customer who is already sad, disappointed or frustrated will have very limited patience whereas a happier or more neutral customer will be able to be more understanding. By recognizing the context right from the beginning, a chatbot can then select the best course of action to take a respective, and take a respective approach to the interaction, which may be to connect the customer to a human on the service desk. So if you combine process integration and automation with a virtual agent, you can create what is essentially a zero touch first line, which can carry out various workflows from start to finish without the customer having to leave that one channel. And this sort of service is the definition of omni-channel support. Now, you may have heard of multi-channel as well as omni-channel, and both types are fantastic if you want to provide your customers with a choice as to how they contact the service desk or seek support so they can use a method which suits them and that can allow them to become more self-sufficient, such as uh, self-help, self-service, chatbots and virtual agents, which can then uh, help a shift left journey. The problem with multi-channel support is that if you have different teams responsible for different channels, those support teams can become siloed. The telephony team uh, may not be great at communicating with the email support team. So customers may get a totally different experience when they interact with each team, and that can be jarring for the customer, and it can have a detrimental effect on channel adoption. Or perhaps a chatbot may not be able to perform a task which self-service can, and therefore customers need to switch channels or give up and call the service desk. Omnichannel, on the other hand, can mean providing your customers with a seamless experience across support channels, according to their preference. Omnichannel support, much like multi-channel, involves companies offering customers numerous ways to interact. The difference is that omnichannel takes a more holistic view by attempting to create a seamless customer experience across multiple channels should the customer need to move between, for example, a chatbot to self-service to the knowledge base. Understanding how these channels fit in with each other will highlight opportunities for automation and integration, which may offer the service desk the opportunity to design a more efficient and consistent service. The presence of omnichannel communication structures in the consumer space has begun to affect what customers expect from their workplace. Why, when I can use a virtual agent to discuss an issue I'm having with my insert consumer brand here account, can I not use it to request a new laptop at work? The integration between each support channel in this instance, a chatbot or virtual agent and a self-service portal or service catalog, and the integration between processes such as request fulfillment, change management and asset and configuration management and departments such as IT facilities and finance need to be seamless and work efficiently behind the scenes so that the customer can get from A to B in one interaction. Ultimately, this can enhance the customer experience, but it can also greatly improve the efficiency of the service desk and the wider organization. 
So I mentioned that a fully integrated virtual agent can allow service desks to create a zero touch first line, which is something many professionals would argue is where the industry is headed. Something else we need to try and do is theorize what the next support channel will be. And this isn't an easy thing to predict. There's so many new technologies which are beginning to be used as support channels, which could become mainstream. And many tech vendors claiming their developments are gonna be the next big thing. But I had a crazy idea. What if the next support channel isn't a support channel at all? And let me explain what I mean by that. I've spoken about one way which you can fully integrate and automate an intelligent bot to handle your first line incidents and requests and potentially more. But there's also technologies available which are self-diagnostic or self-healing and system monitoring tools which can identify and diagnose issues within an infrastructure and prompt a human, be it a customer or service desk staff, to resolve the issue with one click. And there are tools which allow IT departments an unprecedented view into their organization's infrastructure. In turn, this en enables IT professionals to proactively support the business and identify anomalies and issues, potentially before they become disruptive. So it's not totally unreasonable to think that the next support channel we see within ITSM is simply or not so simply self-aware tech, which can monitor an entire infrastructure, identify issues before they become much disruption, and alert an appropriate professional or even resolve the issue itself. And this would create an IT service which is self-sufficient, proactive and reliable and in turn can free up service desk staff time and resources while improving the customer experience. But what happens to the service desk? Some of you may argue that this would cause the service desk to become redundant, risking job losses. But SDI research shows that service desk professionals are aware of the changes that technology will bring and understand that they need to begin developing their support staff to be able to take on more proactive and complex roles and transcend the role of first line support. So rather than replacing service desk staff, you could argue that the service desk would evolve to address other issues um, within the business. Having talked through this hypothesis, however, we need to exercise some realism. Our data shows that the majority of service desks still spend most of their time day-to-day -day firefighting due to a heavy workload. And while the technologies I've spoken about today could help reduce this, it would require a lot of time, money and resources with many service desks, IT departments or organisations may not have to spare. However, if service desks are to survive and stay relevant as technology continues to develop and become more cognitive and customer expectations continue to grow, it's important that organizations start taking steps to prepare for the future changes and evolutions of the service desk. So step one is simply to start where you are. It's important to look at your service from an outside perspective and consider its efficiency as well as how well it meets business requirements if customers have a good experience with it and how well IT communicates with the rest of the organization and vice versa. Is there anything you're missing or any glaring changes that could be made to improve your service? Essentially, is there anything standing in the way of evolving? This could be the first thing that you need to change on your journey. Step two, establish a why. Now this could be to transform the organization, to put it ahead of competition or, um, reduce efficiency, sorry, improve efficiencies and reduce waste to lower support costs. Having a reason to transform can also bring stakeholders together and focus efforts to work towards a single goal. However, if, for example, there's pressure to deliver drastic, unrealistic change, there may be issues surrounding the perception or expectations of IT, which could signify that the relationship with the wider business needs improving before transformation can begin. Step three, define where you want to be. Thinking pragmatically, but realistically, and considering your findings from step one, where could your organization be in the next two, five, 10, 15 years? Where do you want it to be? Obviously, the further away you think, the harder it is to plan, because there's no way of knowing what the norm could be. If your organization has a strategy in place, this could be a good opportunity for IT to understand how they can help the business achieve their goals and align itself closer to the business strategy. However, if you can decide on realistic goalposts and get key stakeholder buy-in, you can begin to make the dream a reality. 
and furthermore by setting out longer term goals you can that can help you to work backwards to mark milestones and perform performance indicators the final step lay out a roadmap now this shouldn't just be a to b it also needs to consider the steps needed to get to each milestone and this could be refining and reducing waste, making your service as efficient as it can be, and getting feedback from customers and key stakeholders. Adopt continual improvement methods and progress iteratively in small increments. Not only is this more manageable, but it also allows you to monitor the impact of changes better and can help you to get valuable direct feedback about what's working and what could be improved. It's also worth noting that your roadmap should be flexible. There's no use sticking to a plan or a strategy if it no longer makes sense for your organization. Reviewing and discussing it every six months or so with key stakeholders could show the need to shift direction, which could ultimately be more beneficial to this organization. So that was everything from me. Uh, I'm sorry for the last minute change. Um, and I know that was a lot of information to throw at you, um, but I hope you found some value in that presentation and you'll go away with some actionable insights. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them or all my contact information is on screen. My name's Poonam and I head up service management for Centra. Um, I'm gonna talk through um, our journey from insourcing the service desk and, and what model we used and, and the reasons why we used it um, and how successful it was. Um, many, many companies I've seen do 